Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to talk about organic compounds in terms of what we're actually going to name in the intro and general chemistry courses. All right, so we know from the previous video, if you happen to watch it, that organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon. And carbon is unique because it can catenate and it has tetravalency. So, or it's tetravalent is the way we talk about it. So in terms of thinking about that, what that means is that carbon is unique and it has the ability to make really long chains. Okay, in organic naming, there are several different components to organic naming because there's a huge number of compounds. So because of that, we're gonna start with the simplest. We're gonna do one particular group of compounds. The group of compounds that we're gonna focus on are called the hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are in, that's an extremely accurate name. And the reason why is because hydrocarbons are made of, they're composed of, of, made up of carbons and hydrogens. Hence the reason why they're called hydrocarbons. Okay, we're gonna take hydrocarbons and we're gonna separate those into subgroups. The subgroups we're gonna talk about, the subclasses, this is a major class of organic compounds, another way of saying a group. And the subclasses we're gonna talk about are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. All of these being aliphatic in nature. Aliphatic, by the way, we defined in the last video. So if you hear me hear, say that term and you're like, I don't know what that is. Last video was a place to look for that. Okay, so in terms of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, alkenes have the distinction of being all, having all single bonds between the carbons. Right? All carbons singly bonded. To one another. Boy, that is a squeaky marker, isn't it? Let's see if I can get another one that's a little bit better. All right. If alkenes are all carbon singly bonded to one another, then alkenes have at least one double bond between two carbons. And I do between this B slash W, that's note taking, sorry if that annoys you, but that means between two carbons. It can have more than one double bond between two carbons, but it has at least one, okay? Alkynes have the distinguishing feature that they have at least one triple bond. Between two carbons. Okay. When we name the way we do this is there's a process, right? So naming, which is really the first thing we t come across in organic chemistry, when we name, we are going to first count the longest continuous carbon chain. Now what in the world does that mean, right? What does the longest continuous carbon chain mean? Well, the longest continuous carbon chain means is that you start at an end and you draw through as many carbons and bonds as you can without lifting your pencil and not deviating until you get to the longest one, okay? So for instance, if we were doing something like this, sometimes it's really obvious, sometimes it's not, Right? In this particular one, if I had all my H's here, the longest continuous carbon chain would be five carbons long, because I'd start right here and draw through all the carbons, right? Sometimes it's obvious, like I said, sometimes it's not. So here's something that might not be as obvious, right? Right, so in looking at this, how long is the longest continuous carbon chain? Well, if I start my pencil at one of these, right, let's start it right here, 
I have to start at an end. I can draw through as many carbons as I can get to. It would not be appropriate to start here or here or here, right? Because the longest continuous carbon chain has to cut, has to start at an end where you can get the most carbons possible. Okay. So sometimes we call this the parent chain. So just FYI, you're going to count the longest continuous carbon chain and you're going to physically number that, right? So you're going to number it, uh, number the carbons. So in this case, you would do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You could have numbered it this way. You could have numbered it this way. There is a better numbering here. We will talk about what that means, right? Um, but you would num physically number your paper. You would choose a stem for that number of carbons. in the parent chain, so the number of carbons in the parent chain. The stems are based off of um, basically the number of carbons. So here, if you want a stem, right, then you would have, let me erase this a little bit. We're just gonna remember that all kinds are at least one triple bond and erase this. All right, cool. So, what you're going to see, especially if you're using, if you have access to my organic handout, you're going to see the number of carbons and then the stem, right? So, it'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it goes through ten to begin with, okay? And the stem for one is meth, stem for two is F. Stem for three is prop. Stem for four is but. Stem for five is pent. Stem for six is hex. And stem for seven is hept. Stem for eight is oct. So on and so forth. Okay, it starts feeling, at five, it starts feeling like Greek prefixes, honestly. Okay. And then you are going to combine the stem which reflects the number of carbons with one of these endings, either ain or een or ein, to reflect how the carbons are bonded to one another. Okay, so choose the stem for the number of carbons in the parent chain, and then three, combine that stem with appropriate ending, right? I'm just gonna do appropriate there, ending. So, for instance here, no matter how I did this, this carbon chain was seven carbons long. Okay, I told you there was a better numbering than, the, you know, one of these was a better numbering, but no matter how you number it, there's se it's seven carbons long. So I would pick a stem that talks about seven carbons, hept, and then because all of these carbons have one line between them, that means they're singly bonded to one another, so I would combine that with Ain. Okay? So heptane is the name of this parent chain. Okay? The beginning part reflects the number of carbons. The end part reflects on whether they are all, all the carbons are singly bonded to one another, if you have a double bond, or if you have a triple bond. Okay? And then after you're done with all of that, you need to name functional and alkyl groups because those are going to change. They're gonna, there's some, you're going to do quite a few things with these, right? Or, and, or I should say, alkyl groups. All right. Functional groups can come before this name. They can change this name. They can totally defy convention, okay? And functional groups are not actually hydrocarbons some of the time. Sometimes functional groups are so important that they have their own class, but we're going to treat them all as if they're under this hydrocarbon idea. Alkyl groups are 
carbons and hydrogens that are not named as part of the longest conti continuous carbon chain. So in that case, what you do is you circle all of them, right? And you tell me what those are, okay? So alkyl groups is kind of like this idea. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna count the number of carbons in what I've circled. I'm gonna find a stem for those, and then I'm gonna add an ending, which talks to me, tells me, you know, this says, hey, blatantly, this is an alkyl group, okay? So for instance here, this has one carbon. The stem for one carbon is meth. And because it's an alkyl group, it doesn't have a number on it. I couldn't number that carbon as part of the longest continuous carbon chain. You add a YL to say that it is an alkyl group. And that becomes a methyl. And you're going to designate those alkyl groups in front of the parent chain name with the number designating what number on the chain they're actually hooked to. OK, that's where it becomes important to recognize in this particular chain, which one is the better numbering, right? So what you look at here is you look at the lowest combination of numbers for the alkyl groups. Okay, I have, and, and longer alkyl groups have higher priority, which means that they are more important, so they get the lower number. Methyl here, this one had one carbon, so that's a methyl. This one has a car one carbon, and so that's a methyl. And so looking at these, in one of these numberings, in the orange numbering, I could have a methyl and a methyl. So two methyls. So let's go for orange here, even though I'm writing it in yellow. Sorry. Should have done the orange here. Orange numbering gives me two methyls hanging off of carbon number three. So there's three at three, there's a methyl. And at three, there's a methyl. And then at carbon number five, there's also a methyl, okay? If I use the pink numbering, just racking and stacking this, right? At carbon number three, there's one methyl. And at carbon number five, that's five right there, there's two methyls, right? So there's a five methyl and a five methyl. In terms of picking the set with the, lar uh, the smallest combination of numbers, Orange wins because there's two at three and one at five. And in pink, there's two at five and one at three, the exact opposite. So orange wins. And we're going to erase this other set of numbering. OK. And so then, in front of this heptane, I'm going to put these groups in. And the way I do this is I use commas to separate numbers, if they're the same number. I use dashes to separate numbers from their groups, just like I have here. And I'm going to throw them all in front of the parent chain name with in alphabetic order. And since these are all methyls, I'm just going to put methyl in front of that parent chain name, and I'm going to tell where they are, OK? So if I wanted to do this, I could say that it's 3, 3, 5, methyl. I'm putting that in front. Sorry, that should go right there. The reason why I'm not making it more clear is because, in fact, this isn't a great name. Because organic chemists would somehow think that you have one methyl that's somehow bridging carbon three twice and carbon five, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so in organic chemistry, the important piece to remember is that it is important to be as physically redundant as possible. So it's not enough to say three, three, five methyl. You have to say not only is there, are there methyls at three, three, and five, but there are three methyls total, each one at these numbers, okay? So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add, say that there are three methyls, a tri, right? Tri is going to go in front of the methyl to say there are three methyls. One is at five, two are at three in the midst of this long continuous carbon chain. So the official name of this compound would be 335-trimethylheptane. 
And we will, this is a not a greatly drawn compound. It was just something to work with. We will do a lot more practice where we actually have structures that are easy to work with very soon. Okay, in another video. Until I see you next time, I bid you adieu.